Now, about filing the nail itself. This is what you want to do. I'll use my, my uh, World War II special here. All right. You always file looking at your fingernails like this. Never like this or like this. Always facing straight at your face. You take the nail file and you just put it slightly underneath your nail there at an angle and you start filing away. Now it's underneath the nail. It's not straight on. It's underneath. Not straight on, but underneath. And as you can see in the diagram that's on your screen there, you kind of eyeball down the file. Down the file there. And that's the angle you want to look at your nail at. All right. Now what you're seeing there, when you eyeball it down the file like that, is you're seeing the edge of your nail. That's an opposite view of what the string is seeing, so that's a good, good angle to look at. And you're looking for a straight line. About this straight line, here we go. Now look at this. Now I'm, I'm kind of contorting myself for the camera here, but don't forget you're looking at your nails the other way. This is just to show you how we should file. You got the file underneath the nail here and you're filing away. Now, you're looking down the file, remember like the eyeball diagram indicated? Now, here we go. You're looking at the edge of your nail and you should see a straight line. See that straight line? Try it again. There you go. There you go. You should be seeing more or less a straight line on the edge of my nail. That's what you're aiming at. But now, okay, now, for filing, you pick your angle. In this case, I'm doing a slight just a very slight ramp. I don't use as much of a ramp as, as some. I pick my angle and I start filing. I file straight. All right, I don't round off all nice and pretty. All right, I'm filing for tone here, not like beauty, you know. So here we go. We file straight, we file straight, we file straight until we come to the desired length. And then now if you, fi if you find that the corner's a little too sharp, you just take the file and you do that a few times. Don't round it off nicely. Just take the edge off the corner if it's too sharp. Okay? Now, about the thumb. Just a quick mention. The thumb has a little angle to it also, but it's the other way. The only reason I do this is to avoid a lot of nail on this side here so it doesn't catch when I play. And what this does is, again, you can see sort of a straight line there, see? And this this fits or conforms itself to my string when I put the thumbnail down, when I put the thumb down on the string. Then I play, and this also gives me a variety of tone possibilities. I can play just nail, I can play more on the tip of my nail for a thinner sound, or all flesh. So again, this is a good this is an ideal shape for the nail. Now let's finish off the nail we just filed. You take the little piece of paper we tore off before, and it's flexible, so you just put it underneath your nail like this. Okay, push it up under there. There we go. And just file, just not file, but finish around. From edge, from side to side, get the entire edge of the nail until it feels sort of glassy smooth. You can kind of tell when it starts feeling smooth. Then you get the absolute edge of the nail, and then you run it over the very top of your nail too. And I won't do that all here because I've already done my nail. Now a couple other very important little items I want to mention here. I get asked a lot about what's a good length for the nail. This is how I tell. This always works for me. Now you take your file and you just put it basically up and down like this. And you take your finger and you put it against the file. Got that? Now the, the fingertip and the nail should touch at about the same time. If you have to do that for them to touch at the same time too long, and if you have to do this for them to touch simultaneously is too short. Basically they should touch at almost the same time, possibly with a little tilt this way, but n not much longer than that. For me that's ideal. Now it depends on how fat or how tapered your fingertip is. There's one more thing too. If after you've filed and finished off your nail and you still have a little something, kind of a strange tone, but you can't quite place it because your nail looks perfect. This, again, this almost always works for me. You take your 
file like this, or if you have a metal file, you take your metal file and you put the paper around it like this. Okay? See that? And you just play on it like a string. Several times. Play on the guitar a little bit. Play the file, play on the guitar until the tone goes away. It's usually just a little imperfection somehow on the edge of the nail. Now, we have to look at some nail types here. Very important. Look at the diagram on your screen. Now, there are a few different nail types we have. There are, uh, as you can see, type A is a nail type that's curved. B goes straight across. C is an all-too-common nail type where the middle of the fingernail hooks downward like a little beak. And type D is a type that curves up in the middle. And now, if you're lucky enough to have type A where it's round, you're, you're not going to have much problem with your nail, with the nail shape. But unfortunately, too many of us have these other types of nails. So what to do? Now, these are only suggestions. Experiment with them a little bit and see how they work. But these usually work for me and the students I've worked with. If you have either types A or B, from your, as you can see on your screen there, shapes number three and four, either one of those ramps will do, do nicely. Uh, for type A especially, both of those shapes work really well. If you have type C with a little beak in the middle of your nail there dipping down, uh, shape number three is really the, the only way to go because what you're doing there because of that upward ramp you're cutting through the middle of that beak that hook and you're minimizing the hook that way so that usually works experiment though with the extremity of the ramp it could be it have, might have to be a little more extreme depending on the severity of your the hook and if you have shape or type number D where it goes up in the middle again you could use nail shapes three and four um, I would suggest again nail shape number three just because it again will slice through that that imperfection there in the middle of your nail and but you know try both the thing is to be experimental here and really get to know what works for you don't lock yourself into any one way you know always kind of uh, be free to experiment and this way not only you know how what works best for you but later on you'll be able to teach your students what's best for them now remember two things. Straight line is good and a ramp is good. That's nails.